Welcome back. The addition of AI technology, palm readers, and more advanced tech continue to transform the grocery shopping experience. Consumer Reports investigated how consumers can utilize this technology to improve their shopping experience and save money at both local and large chain supermarkets. Ryan Vines, Deputy Editor for Special Projects at Consumer Reports, joins me to discuss. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us once again. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Now, you know, I talked about it briefly, but can you tell us a little bit more or, you know, expand on how the landscape of grocery shopping has changed over time? Well, as you just said, technology has invaded every space of our lives, right? And that includes the grocery store now. You briefly hinted at this new technology from the folks at Amazon that actually maps your palm. They do a scan of your palm that you can do right from your mobile phone. And then you link that scan to a payment way, a payment method. So you can like say, okay, this palm belongs to this credit card. So now I'm linked forever. And all I need to do to go and buy something is hold my hand over this little scanner and boom, the money comes out. So that's just one of the ways that they're trying to speed us through the grocery store. Because most of the time, the worst part about grocery shopping is that long line. So that's the sort of Amazon solution. But that's just one of many things, including new smart carts that you connect your credit card and you walk around and you put stuff in and there's all these readers around that are keeping a running total and show you exactly what you're buying. And they even have a scale inside. So you can buy bulk things or fruit and weigh them and keep it moving. And you never have to talk or interact with anyone. When you're done, you just swipe that card and you can walk right out the door. Now, I know these are some, I know for some of them, they're a little bit more extreme or just because we're not used to seeing things like having a palm yeah. reader, um, you know, pay for all of our items. Um, but, you know, why might these things or how can these things be a little bit more beneficial? I know that sometimes people are a little bit apprehensive to change or things that are new. Um, but, you know, just from your research, what have you found? How have you found this actually be beneficial to shoppers? Well, one of the things is, like I said just a second ago about cutting that lag time, because that's a reason why a lot of people don't like to go to the store because you have to do it and then you're waiting in line. And sometimes those lines are long. Like I've walked into the grocery store and left because I see long lines, unless I really need something. So it really is about attracting more people for an in-store experience because grocery stores know that once they get you in there, they start playing all those mind tricks on you when you go for one thing and you leave with two bags worth of stuff. And with the price of groceries right now, it really is about moving people through and giving them the most information that they can so they can make an informed decision. And what we hope is that people actually use some of this technology, including the store loyalty clubs, to save some money while they're in the grocery store. Now, with that being said, how could the growing integration of technology in everyday shopping affect consumer behavior and expectations? Well, we expect more from the grocery stores now because other parts of our lives have been made so much easier, is the idea, by adding technology to them. So it really is bringing that same sort of fast motion people centered just on yourself way of moving through. Like we saw self checkout become a thing. And in the beginning, it's like, what? Like, I don't work here, but now you actually want to go to self checkout and get out quicker instead of waiting in line. And this is almost like the evolution of self checkout. Another thing where technology is coming in, I don't know how many of us shop at those big box stores around New York, but, you know, if you get up to the Costco or BJ's and you're like waiting in line and then you have to wait in that line for that person with the highlighter so they can look at your cart and see that you have what you paid for. And there's some new AI technology that's being piloted at some big box stores where you can skip that line and just walk right through a sensor, not unlike the ones at the airport. And they can scan everything with AI so you don't even have to wait in that line for the person to check off your receipt. So wow. it's all about convenience and getting you in and out to stop that lag at the checkout, which is aside from the high cost of groceries, 
the number one reason why people find it annoying to go shopping. That's amazing. It's just so like to hear all of these things. I think in some neighborhoods right. we we still do things kind of the old school way, um, you know, in some neighborhoods. But it, I have gone to some of the big chain uh, uh, supermarkets where I have seen these things or I've even seen um, I would like to call them like little robots checking for inventory. <laughs> um, and so it's just really interesting to see how technology is just changing that aspect of our lives. Um, but I also want to talk about things that I guess now would be considered old technology. Um, and that's like the use of apps. How could apps be used to kind of help our experience? I know we're all very familiar with it, but how can we use it in a new way to kind of uh, have a better grocery shopping experience? Well, apps are the number one gateway to actually saving money at the grocery store. We know food prices are high, and it's the number one indicator of inflation for Americans, according to a lot of surveys, that we feel the price of things rise the most at the grocery store because we know how much something costs, and then we go in, and it's more and more every week. So we know what food prices are, but the apps that you can download to your phone are some of the easiest ways to get savings. We have a stop and shop in my neighborhood and uh, you go there and once I experienced the time where there were three different prices for one item, it was ice cream. So you could go in and buy one of them for $6.99 for the pint. But if you had the uh, savings club, the loyalty program, you could get them two for seven. But if you had the loyalty club and downloaded the app where you could get a digital coupon, you could get them at two for six. So it's one item, three different prices, and it all depends on how deep you want to go with your relationship with the store. If you just walked in off the street, it's one price. If you join their savings club, it's another. If you join the savings club and took the step further to download that app onto your phone, you got another dollar off. So that is really, in a nutshell, what these programs can do. How deep do you want to get for the discounts that are the biggest? Now, with that being said, I kind of want to move over and talk about different services like Instacart mm -hmm. or Fresh Direct. You know, how have they impacted how we shop for groceries? And are these services actually help? You know, helpful? Do they help us uh, save or are we spending more money? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, one of those things about those services is they, they were clutch during the pandemic when a lot of us were like keeping it close and not going out. So shout out to all those essential workers who were essential then are still essential now who were bringing us the groceries and making sure that we made it through. But one of the things that they did was really wake up grocery stores to say, you know what, we like having people in our stores because they actually do purchase more things when they come in. So the, those apps can be a double-edged sword. Sometimes you uh, can stick to your budget by only ordering what you need as seen on one of the grocery getting apps. So you're not tempted by something that looks like a good deal or you went in and you were hungry and you came out buying all these extra things that you really didn't need. So that is one of the advantages of shopping on one of the Instacarts or the other apps that just bring the groceries to you. But sometimes those apps, you have to be careful because if you are a person who shops with coupons, and there's no reason we shouldn't all be using coupons a little more, uh, some of them have couponing policies that just don't honor them. So you could be cheating yourself out of savings by taking advantage of the convenience of the sort of click and go model with your groceries. So, be careful. Watch out. It could be convenient, but make sure that that convenience isn't costly. Now, speaking of costs, uh, a lot of people turn to store brands at times, but there's this perceived idea that they're not as good as some of the big name brands that we're used to seeing growing up. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you found out about store brands and, you know, what strategies are supermarkets using to improve the, per in the perception of store brands? Well, this is another reason why the stores want you to come in because store brands that are now we call them private label. When I was a kid, we just said generic and they came into like black and white box. And it's like, not that, get the cornflakes, don't buy the generic <laughs> one. But uh, those store labels, which are private label brands right now, you can save 15 to 25% off of food 
if you buy the store uh, brand, which is that private label, and if you're buying like personal care things like your body wash, toothpaste, mouthwash, antiperspirant, all of those things can save you 50%, literally half as much if you buy the private label brands. And stores want you in so you can discover those brands. And many of them offer money back guarantees if you buy it and don't like it. So it would be worth a try if you can save 15 to 25% and up to 50% on personal care things just by trying that private label. Some of those products are actually made in the same factory by the same people who make those national name brands that we grew up with watching all their commercials. So it's worth giving it a try, especially when they're willing to say, we'll give you your money back if you don't like it. I was just going to say, I think that's like one of the, I guess it's not a conspiracy, but it was a big conspiracy <laughs> at some point that people were like, they're actually the same thing. They're made from the same factory. Uh, so it's kind of nice to hear you say that. It's absolutely true. There's like uh, the people at Post Cereal, like your Honey Bunches of Oats and all that. Same thing as some of the store brands. Over at Costco, they're Kirkland. They have some uh, Starbucks products and a bunch of other things that literally are coming from the same place at a much lower price just because they don't have the national name brand on them. Wow. It's true. <laughs> well, you know, with right? that- Save I, your I, money. <laughs> I want to say, you know, I, I've also noticed that people from younger generations tend to kind of ignore this, um, you know, these mm. ideas to save big. You know, I'll sometimes have to tell my friends like, hey, you know, you could do this or don't buy this now. Wait, you know, what advice would you give to some young adults who are kind of just starting this journey with buying uh, groceries and sure. kind of looking for ways to save? What I would tell anyone who's looking to save, especially young people, is to get into the rhythm of looking for sales and trying to save. Don't buy something just because the commercial told you that it's the latest, greatest, and it costs more than something that could be made in the same place or is just as good. So really experiment, but don't get caught up in the okie doke with looking at all of the shiny, bright things. One other thing is groceries are one of the only places where you have more control. Gas costs what it costs, the rent costs what it costs, insurance, car, all of these things cost as much as they cost and there's not a lot of wiggle room. But if you go to the grocery store, there are options. And that money that you save at the grocery store can be saved for real and put to work for you or you can use it in other areas of your life because the light bill is not going down. Right, exactly. But groceries go on sale. So groceries are the only place that you really have control over how your money goes out. So think about that and look at other parts of your life where you could use that assist that you get from buying the private label versus the one with the commercial. Right. Well, you know, with that, I want to thank you so much for joining us and educating our community on how they can save at the grocery store. Anytime. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> To read Brian's article titled Save Big at the Supermarket, please go to the Consumer Reports website, which is on your screen below. Stay tuned. We have more from you right after this.